I said it was it was great to be there, but I, it was not easy, and um, I had no idea what was to come. Um, this video was made just a couple of months before one of our missionary pharmacists from Indianapolis died. Andy contracted a virus that attacked his brain and caused a lot of other issues. Another missionary on the radio team found out she had a brain tumor the same time Andy contracted his um, illness. She needed surgery and had to fly out to Germany. There was interpersonal conflicts within our team that um, you're trying to work through because um, <laughs> that's not why you came. Silas broke his arm. Maeve's elbow became dislocated. The tower was finally completed after you saw some of the construction, and the day that it was completed, a storm came through at midnight and took it all down. Um, and the list really, really can go on. And when I made this video, I just had no idea what was to come, and that is probably good. We were in a battle zone, like a spiritual battle zone, it felt like. And we returned um, to the United States about a year ago. So exactly a year ago, we were in a debriefing uh, time. And the counselor asked us, why did you guys stay? And why didn't you just leave? And I, we kind of both stared at each other and like blankly stared at her. Um, and, and the answer was obvious. Uh, there's a lot of people there that don't even know that Jesus exists. And um, if we're going to try to live with eternity in view, um, that that's our main goal and that's what really matters, and there's people that don't even know who he is, um, that's why we stayed. And so um, I, I don't know if we're going to say this later, but uh, it's different going back the second time because of everything that happened the first time. Uh, we really are going into what feels like a battleground, a battle field, and we know what happened, and um, it feels like a lot of spiritual attacks, so that um, I'm a little bit afraid. We survived, and we're, we're committed to going back because um, the eternal souls of people really do matter the most. Um, but what's that going to look like for us? Um, I'm not really sure. So um, that's a little bit, and I'm going to hand it over to Andy, and let him do some talking, and then I think we'll. So <coughs> if, we, if we were thinking of just one thing to ask of you guys, it's just please don't forget us. Please remember us. Um, we were thinking and, and looking, and it seems like the, the church in Philippi in the Bible is the, the best example of a supporting church. So... I just want to give you a small challenge. You don't have to open your Bibles if you don't want to, but if you, you want to follow along, I just want to write down three little letters and remember this one word, PEG, P-E-G. I'd like to say that this was my great idea, but it wasn't. We, we actually found this on a blog um, called Disciple All Nations. Um, but many other thoughts about church and how the church in Philippi supported Paul um, we'd just like to share this with you a little bit. So PEG, P-E-G, remember that. Prayer, that's the, the P stands for prayer. In Philippians 1.19, it says, Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Paul says that the church was praying for him. He, he has something to base this off. He, he knows this either on his own interactions or through the years people would come to him and th things would, would lead him to this conclusion. Someone had told Paul that they were praying for him, the praying people for him back in Philippi while he was in jail. So that the first part of support, of supporting anyone, <laughs> is prayer. And especially in this example of Philippi and you guys supporting anyone is prayer. And that's, that's, that's fall on your knees, face on the ground, cry out to God, prayer. And it really is the most important part. So what's P stand for? Prayer. Okay, the next three letters, P-E-G. It's like we're playing pig, but we're playing peg. Peg, P-E-G. E stands for encouragement. It's, it's in that second chapter that we learned that at, at Philippi, he, he sent a guy named Epaphroditus, and we can only assume that his arrival was, was just this huge encouragement to Paul. He was sent to go and encourage, encourage Paul while he was in prison. I mean, no doubt prison is, is, not, is not a 
happy place here in the States, and I can't imagine what it was in, in Bible times. It was, it was not very pretty, and he, he probably brought news from home and um, from the church and how, how all these you know, letters were sent and, and words of encouragement. The, the proverb says, um, in Proverbs 25, it says, Let cold water to a weary soul. So is good news from a distant land. So you just you long to hear from your friend from far away or from, from distant relatives. Well, he was longing to hear, to, to hear from that, that church that sent him and is supporting him even while he was in prison, even while he was ministering in prison. We want to know. We want to know what's going on with you guys. And we want you to know what's going on with us. We want to be encouraged, and we want to be and feel connected to you guys. So that's... That is number two. What was number one? Prayer. E stands for encouragement. Prayer and encouragement. So important. She said I just did a good job. Oh, you did a good job. You guys are doing a great job. Next, students, we're going to. (laughs) So prayer, encouragement. G stands for give. In chapter four in Philippians, we learn that the church also sent financial gifts with Epaphroditus. This is not the first time the Philippians had financially supported Paul's missionary work. He said, and you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except only you. Even in Thessalonica, you, you sent me help for my needs once and again. So while, while one-time gifts are useful, the best practice for missionary Our mission partnerships involves ongoing financial support. The next verse, Philippians 4.17 says, Not that I seek the gift itself, not that I myself is seeking, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. Think of it like as as a a CPA entering these things in a little ledger. This passage, it's it's kind of like a a transaction. It's not not a transaction between just two people. You've got a third third party involved. God is acting as like the accountant. He gives the Philippian church credit in their heavenly account for, for supporting Paul. And this can really bring home what Jesus said in Matthew when he was talking about storing up those treasures. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where, where the moth and the rust destroy and where the thieves break in and steal. Those are going to go away. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. We want to look into eternity. We're looking at from that perspective. And that's why, that's why we stay when it gets hard. And that, that and the prayers and the financial giving and the encouragement and the sacrifices that people here are making. So P stands for, E stands for, and G, give. Three main things to be a supporting partnership, either in ministry or or friendship or whatever. Peg. Just remember Peg. So uh, where are we right now? Uh, We're getting ready to leave. We hope that we leave in a couple of weeks. Uh, I think I was talking to Jamie, and she thought it would be one week, and that is if the government cooperates with us. So um, it's really all in the government's hands right now as far as visas and, um, and other things. Um, but if God allows, we will be heading back very soon before the end of the month. Um, the radio station is on 24 hours a day right now, so that's a huge blessing. I told you it fell down. Um, God supplied in amazing ways, and within less than one year, I think it was 10 months, the tower had been financed, paid for, shipped from the United States, um, put up, and I don't even know, how tall is it? 200 feet. And, um, and both of the buildings restored that were destroyed. So that's really incredible because it took three years to do it the first time and 10 months to do it the second time. So God showed up. Um, Our team is continuing to um, record God's word for the first time in local languages. These languages are not written languages. They're just uh, spoken languages. So we're working with another mission organization that actually does the translating. They're phonetically translating it. And God has blessed us with people that that are Togolese that have been trained um, to, to read phonetically, which I can't do. 
and uh, they're being able to record God's word for the very first time, and that's like a way bigger project than we thought we would be involved in, but huge um, to be able to have God's word in your heart language. I, I really, it hurts my heart when I see how I act um, towards God's word sometimes because I see how they act when they finally hear it for the first time, and I want so much to have that um, love and passion that they have for God's word because we take it for granted. Um, I don't even know how many English translations we have of God's word right now, but they don't even have one, and um, just please pray for that. This is one of the things that feels like a real attack, like things keep coming up, um, because if you don't have God's word, then it's really hard to know what, what God's trying to say. Um, so those are some great things that are happening. Uh, as we've been talking the last few minutes, you've helped me, well, I don't know, maybe you really paid attention to Andy, but you might have paid attention to the pictures, and these are just snippets of our life. There's a story behind every single picture, which we can't tell you, but if you have one that you've seen and you're really curious about, find us and we'll let you know. Um, some of these pictures, I think, are actually in a photo album at the back table, so you can go back and look at it again or a little more closely. Um, these are the people that we interact with every single day. These are our friends, and these are our neighbors. Um, and these are the people that we know are going to die and go to hell because they don't have a relationship with Jesus. Um, while we were in Togo, we obviously saw rejection. We had health issues, and there were lots and lots of obstacles. But we also saw people follow Jesus, change their lives, make public professions through baptism, and churches raise their very own mon money to build a gathering place for their congregation. And those are really huge things. And that's because of you guys. If you guys don't give, and if you guys don't pray, um, we can't stay. The Bible is being recorded because of you, because you supported us and you supported the work that's there. There are new believers because of your faithful prayers and because of your support. And we can't wait to get to heaven so that you guys can see people there that you've never met before that are there because of your sacrificial giving. Like, I, I can't wait for you guys to meet Abina or Najambara uh, or I am praying for Ali. Maybe he will give his life to Christ. These people that we spend so much time with that you have never met will be there because of you. And I really hope that you understand how deep and how significant that is. So thank you. Thank you for that. We're so thankful for you. Like I said, you guys are a part of our whole story um, and not just a piece of it. So we do ask you, don't forget us. As we go out on your behalf again and share Jesus on the other side of the world, we're thinking of you, and um, we're praying for you, and we ask that you do the same for us. So, I don't know. See how that God is taking this couple uh, in representation of the gospel of Jesus Christ as well as in representation of this church all the way around the world to Togo, Africa. That's amazing. And, you know, we would love at some point in time to make a, a journey as a church to come and visit uh, Andy and Amanda and their, and their ministry there. And so that's something I would ask for you to begin to pray that God would make a way for that to happen and also to put on your heart uh, to go. Those of you that would want to do that, we would love to be able to pack up and to go and to visit them in Togo, Africa. And it's quite a journey, right? It, what's that? You'll take us, all right. And, uh, you know, it's not like you just hop on a plane and fly into their city. It doesn't work that way. Uh, you fly in, and then once you get there, then you have to take a bus ride for how far? About eight to ten hours, that's it. That's all, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a sacrifice if the bus doesn't break down. There you go, that's true, too. You are in Togo, Africa. Uh, there's no potholes, though. The roads are perfectly level, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. Well, we, uh, yes, it will, be a, it will be something that I'd really like to see the Lord uh, give us the opportunity to do. But can I say this, that regardless of whether we're able to physically go or not go, we are going through Andy and Amanda. And each of you are personally a part of that mission. 
uh, as it's been explained. All right, if, if Andy was just trying to say, look, if you do these three things, you've been pegged. I mean, you are a part of their ministry to pray, encourage, and to give. And that's our way of being a part of the ministry uh, in Togo, Africa. And I, I know that the Bible tells us in the end of Matthew, it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? And we are to go. And you may say, well, how in the world do I go into the uttermost parts of the earth when I've got a job here in Evansville? That's through our networking together, uh, through our missionaries. We're able to not only do our ministry here, but we're also able to do ministry around the world. And God wants you to be a part of that. And so I love, I just, I, my prayer has been today that God would ignite in the heart of every individual that's here today to understand the importance of the mission ministry that we have. And, and your giving is very important. And we thank God for those that have made commitments to be a part of the mission ministry of Mill Road, have made commitments to, to have a, a year commitment. And we just want to encourage you to stay faithful to your commitment because if we're not faithful to it, uh, it's just like a well that the water will eventually run out. And when the water runs out, uh, and that's financially speaking, then we have nothing to send. And so we want to be a sending church. And I thank God for the faithfulness of you who have been a part of this. And this journey has been an awesome journey. But we don't want to do this journey alone. We would like to have more people to join us in this journey because the more people we have to join the journey of financially helping in the way of missions, we're able to, to also support other missionaries to go to other parts of the world as well. With every head bowed and every eye closed,